Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're going to have a look back at some of the most innovative and frankly weird gear from 2017 and have a sneak peek at what's coming next year. Now, as always with The Gear Show, we want your input on this. Did you buy a bit of kit in 2017 that you thought was going to be brilliant and turned out to be rubbish? Or was there something that you bought thinking, eh, I'm not so sure, and it was the best thing you've ever owned? Let us know by commenting below. So in terms of innovation, we have to start with this, the Edelrid Ohm. Now, this has really changed the way that people belay. So let's say you've got a lighter climbing partner with a heavy person. Gone are the days where that person would shoot up the wall and sort of smash into it. What this does is add friction to the system. So when the heavier climber falls, the device moves up, the little V thing catches the rope and it slows the climber down so there isn't that violent tug for the B layer into the wall. You clip it onto the first quick draw of the route and just B lay and climb normally from then on. So to test this thing out, we went to our local climbing crag filled the backpack full of rocks and lobbed a guy off the top of it. You have to watch this. So that was a good first test, but there isn't a huge weight difference between me and Jack. I'm carrying a little extra Christmas weight. But Jake here is considerably lighter than me. He is the copywriter at the Epic TV office. So he is gonna be our crash test dummy on a heavier weight with the Ohm. Can't wait. <laughs> Now I've used the Edelrid Ohm quite a lot and I've seen it used a lot and I can only really see one problem with it and that problem isn't really the device's fault. So what I've seen happen sometimes is if the B layer isn't giving enough slack, so if there's quite a tight rope between the B layer and the device and the climber, the Ohm can sort of get stuck in the up position. That means that the climber won't be able to pull up slack. This is something that can be very easily avoided by giving the correct amount of slack. So you want a little bit of a dip in the rope between the B-layer and the device, like you'd normally lead B-layer, really. The thing with this is, it's not a solution to B-laying. You need to still do good B-laying practice, otherwise the device just doesn't work properly. So it is fantastic, it's innovative, it stops the B-layer smashing into the wall. Just make sure you know how to B-lay before using it. It doesn't solve all the problems. Now let's move on to something that I wasn't sure if people would actually like, the Kong Panic. This is a longer, flexible quick draw, which is quite stiff. So what this allows you to do is reach a bolt above your head if you're below it and you can't reach it with your normal arm stretch. So if you're scared or if you're working a route, you can reach up, clip the bolt, clip your rope to it and not take that whipper. Every climber has had that moment when you wish you could reach a little higher to clip a bolt. When the fear kicks in and the last drawer is far below you, desperate measures are called for. The Kong Panic is a tool for those moments when you're out of reach of a bolt or anchor and need a little extra stretching power. The Panic allows you to clip the bolt and attach the rope, removing the risk of a potentially dangerous fall. You will need to attach an extra carabiner or quick draw to the Panic. Now this product is especially interesting to me because of the reaction it had on social media. We put the video up and everyone, well, everyone in the comments completely slated it, saying it was useless, people should just take the fall, that no one would ever buy it. We sold out of that thing in about a day. It was crazy. So there's obviously a market for it. And it's a market that initially I didn't really get. I sort of, sort of was aligned with the comments being like, just take the fall, you know, it's not that bad. However, Recently, I've been working sort of harder routes, routes at the edge of my grade. And there's been times where there's a section that I wanted to kind of work, do on the top rope, that I didn't want to take a fall and have to reclimb it all again. For that situation, for me, I kind of get this thing. You know, if I'm below the bolt, I want to work a bit, I can reach up, clip it, and not have that sort of red point faff. 
I also understand that if you're new to climbing and you're a little bit nervous of taking a fall, it, it might make you feel uh, more confident when you're climbing. So I didn't get it, I now get it. It sold really, really well, so check it out. And also all of these products are in the uh, copy below. There's a little link, so you can click on that if you want to buy anything. So finally, if we're talking about innovation, we have to talk about the Gree Gree Plus. Now, I know we've covered this a lot, but it's super interesting because Petzl, instead of working on the Petzl Gree Gree 3 or something, they went back to the drawing board in terms of safety, looked at the Gree Gree, looked at its failings and decided how they could improve that. It features a redesigned lowering lever, so the bee layer can no longer just open it up and drop the climber in a panic. It now jams if you let it go too fast. It's got a new top rope and lead mode, making the rope more or less grabby depending on which mode it's in. What people don't seem to talk about the new Grigri Plus is the fact they've upgraded the internals of it as well. It now works better, it's smoother, it's more fluid, and it will last longer. So it is an upgrade in terms of use as well as safety. Now I said this at the time and I stand by it. If you have a Petzl Grigri 2 and it's fine, I wouldn't buy the Grigri Plus. But if you're new to climbing or you haven't got a Grigri and you're looking to buy one, get the Grigri Plus. It's sort of a no-brainer. It's a little bit more expensive and a tiny bit heavier, but the amount of safety features and the fact that the internals have been redesigned just make it a better Grigri. So don't buy one if you've already got one, but definitely buy one if you haven't. So now let's have a look at the gear coming in 2018. A little look into the future. So first up is the much anticipated and much delayed Wild Country Revo. Now we actually filmed a whole sort of product video for this. We were at Raven Tour with Will Boaty, he was climbing Hubble, I was belaying him. We were all ready to go and then it got postponed and continued to be postponed. Now word is that they were working on one of the mechanisms in it and they weren't quite happy with it so they tweaked the whole device. Now you could say that this is a worry, that there was something wrong with it, but to my mind, World Country is just trying to make it the best product possible and I don't want to rush it. So hopefully when they release it, it's going to be perfect. Now, I spoke to the guys from World Country the other day and they promised me they'd give me a ring in January to explain when it's going to be released. So watch this space. And on the subject of Wild Country, they are bringing out a new climbing shoe. Now what's exciting about this shoe is Wild Country are the first ones to use injection molding for the rubber. They're working with Michelin, who not only obviously provide really good rubber, but they also have the machines to make this possible because those machines are very, very expensive and apparently huge. Now we saw a prototype at Outdoor and it was miles off being the actual model. It was kind of a bit floppy at the moment, but what you could see is the precision in the, with the injection molding in the sole. It was just perfect and looked completely different from any other rubber on a shoe I've ever seen. Now, this might not work as an idea, it might be terrible on real rock, but it's a really exciting concept and I can't wait to try it out. They say I'm gonna get a pair when it eventually hits the market, so when that happens, I'll let you know what I think. Now on the subject of shoes, the new Black Diamond range is gonna be coming to Europe in the next couple of months. I think it's out in America to buy. I mean, certainly the, the athletes are using them in America. So if you've used them and you're watching this from America, comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, we filmed with Black Diamond, well, actually the man behind the camera, Mr. Hugo Pilcher, filmed with Black Diamond, made this amazing little video, so make sure you check that out. When we put our heads together to design the shoes, we wanted to blend the old world, European hand craftsmanship of making climbing shoes with what Casey knows about the materials and the processes of those materials in Asia. So really, the line is a coming together of European craftsmanship and Asian material know-how. I quite like the fact that Black Diamond haven't just made one shoe, they've made a whole range of shoes. They've really smashed into this market. So I can't wait to test them as well and comment below if you've already worn them. I think shoes this year are going to move in quite an interesting direction. So there's quite a few brands working on indoor specific shoes, uh, rubber that can be replaced and works better on plastic holds. We know this indoor climbing market is massive and I think shoe manufacturers are starting to take note of that. So my prediction is more indoor shoes. Now the final product I want to talk about, the thing that springs to mind the most is the Beal Escaper. So the Beal Escaper is a releasable abseiling system. So usually when you abseil, you have to double your rope up. So if you've got a 60 meter rope, it's actually going to be 30 meters. With the Beal Escaper, you can abseil on one long thin strand, tug it 10 times, and it all releases and goes down to you so you don't lose your rope. 
So this allows you to get off routes very, very quickly and theoretically only carry one rope up some of these things. Now this is a brilliant, if not slightly terrifying idea. I'm sure that many climbers feel the same way, but I hate abseiling. I hate it. It's terrifying. Like suddenly trusting that one thing with your whole life is a bit of a weird concept in climbing and it's scary, especially if you're alpine climbing and you're perhaps trusting anchors that aren't 100% bomber, which you should always make sure they are 100% bomber. So with this system, you tug it 10 times and it comes down to join you. I mean, Beale have obviously tested this to pieces. Like it must be a, a fantastic workable product and I trust that it is going to work. It's just a bit scary. I mean, they told me that you only need to put 10 kilograms of weight on the rope to stop that system. So it's not like you can sort of like suddenly unweight it by accident. You have to take all weight off it and tug it down 10 times. It should work. I think it's a brilliant idea. I sort of, I'm saying I can't wait to test it. No, I'm terrified to test it, but uh, I am going to test it. So there'll be a video of me dangling off a cliff very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. So that's it, action packed gear show, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for watching the gear show all of this year. It started off as a bit of an experiment and it's grown into something a lot bigger. So uh, cheers for your support. Now we're going to ISPO in a couple of weeks, which is the big trade show where we get to see new gear for 2018. So keep an eye out on social media for all of our updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.